The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 29th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. That mix is going like this. You got the Dow off 27 points. The SP's down two. The Nasdaq's up one. The, uh, the Russell's up six. The semis are off 10. You've got gold trading out at 2044. That's up eight bucks. Silver's trading at 2310. That's up 23 cents. Lights recruit 7519. That's up a buck 78. Uh, natural gas is off 23 pennies in the 30 year treasury. Print out 12006. Now, our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, Chipotle. Up 44 bucks, nearly 2%. MicroStrategy, 21 bucks, 4%. Equinix, 13 bucks, 1 and 6 tenths percent. Adobe, 12 bucks, 2%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals up over 1%. That's an $11 move. The Shakers to the downside, it is Mercado Libre off 30 bucks, 1 and 7 tenths percent. PDD Holdings down 13 bucks, 9%. Williams and Sonoma off 10 bucks. Shockwave Medical down 7. Corbis Pharmaceuticals off 5. That's an 18% move to the downside. So we got movers and we got shakers, of course. So I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin the day by looking at, let's look at the four bearish charts that exist in the marketplace right now. And when I say four bearish, I'm referring to uh, cash indices, the ETFs, the index ETFs out there, as well as the equity future contracts. So let's go switch over to my white background charts. Let's get to that actual set of charts that are the four that we should keep an eye on. Why? Because they've got topping patterns out there. So now we've got those four. You got the Dow. Uh, well, I take this back. So the Dow Jones did have a, uh, a Rhodes Benton indicator top, and that was negated on Friday. So that was set up by this little bear sash candle. And so the resistance level would be the high of the uh, prior candle out there. In this case, that was at 38.109. And Friday's close was at uh, 38.109.43. Oh, and the high on that prior candle was 3810920. So by 23 pennies, that top was negated. That's just simply how it rolls out there. But a, a another bearish reversal candle, well, that would go ahead and trigger a Rhodes momentum indicator top. So that one is gone. But when we do have tops out here, we've got it in the socks. You've also got it really in the SMH. Let me just switch over here and put the SMH uh, chart up. But let's just change it so that we can have some profile levels in there. If you give me a uh, moment, we'll do that. We'll put in the... Uh, Proper template here, get all that going all daily. There we go. So now we at least have some profile level. So you can see in the case of the SMHs, uh, which is different, uh, the uh, set of holdings and what's inside the actual semiconductor index, which we have next. So you can see the uh, 
Uh, in the case of the uh, SMHs, they're holding that green oscillator and change line, which is a uh, bullish signal. It actually gives you a neutral signal at this stage here because we have that top. What is that top going to do? If it finds support where it should find support, then it gives us a neutral signal. However, close below that level, and this is the SMHs out here, that level being 187.87. Don't hold me right to the penny, but a close below that line would then suggest a move down to the bottom of its new profile. That's at 183.70. In the case of the semi conductor index we don't have profiles there to assist us but we can see that it's lost its momentum with price being below that green oscillator and change line and that suggests lower prices you can see we've taken out uh, we're not trading below it right now at the moment we have taken out yesterday or Friday's low we're not even anywhere near Friday's high out there uh, if we take a look at the XLF the XLF generated a uh, it has a wave number seven so very, 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 very small portion of the uh, Chapman wave out there. But that is letter G. That was confirmed on Friday. Now what price is likely doing in the case of the XLK is targeting uh, its oscillator and change on. That's at 201.12, a close below that because there also was a new profile that formed on Friday. It's bullish in structure. In the case of the XLK, it'd be between 197.92 and 199.57 where price should find support. That's if it closes below that green oscillator and change line. And finally, we've got the NQ. And the NQ formed a Rhodes Mentum indicator top a few days ago when it generated that bearish shooting star candle only close above that high negates that signal there is a new profile that formed last week uh, resistance is up at 17683 support at 17351 so to summarize these charts watch 17351 for the nq watch 20112 for the xlk uh for the semis uh continue watching the uh, lows of those prior candles out there as well as the highs just to give you a feel for the momentum a piece of it inside the smhs you want to watch that oscillator and change line and Again, that's printed out at 187.86. So those are four charts to take a look at and to monitor and pay attention to. If we take a look at the actual equity future contracts out here, what we'll see is that uh, today is going to likely become bar number seven of a TD9 count pattern out there. So the ES could this week form a TD9 count top. A bearish reversal candle before that pattern uh, might form would generate a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. And there, if price could close below that green oscillator and change line, then we'd be looking at a move probably back to about the 48.27, 48.41 level. At least that would be its first stop. That oscillator and change line, currently printed at 49.12. We take a look at the NQ. We've really already covered that, I believe. We don't need to do that. The Dow Equity Future contract going to form bar number seven today. So you could get a TD9 count top between Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, just like in the ES Mini out there, short of that, a, ro a uh, bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. You've got support, real key support, at 37,386. That's in the Dow Equity Future contract. Russell 2000 is beginning to trade just slightly above the top of its daily profile. But in order for it to generate some type of breakout signal, meaning that it wants to move higher, we need to see it close above that oscillator and change line. That is acted as resistance for uh, what now appears to be six sessions out there, at least five. Uh, today's session is not over. So the last five sessions, that is held as a key resistance level. So that's what's going on on the daily time frame for the equity future contracts out there. What else can we take a look at? Well, as long as we're talking about equity future contracts, let's go switch back to our other screen. Let's try to understand what's going on across the globe. How is it that traders in Europe, uh, in the UK, and in Japan are thinking about the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow out there? And the answer to that question, new all-time highs in the ES in terms of euros, pounds, and yen today. The same is true with the Dow. We haven't made a new all-time high in terms of dollars, but that is likely to follow. That's a signal of that message of global uh, capital flows into the U.S. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get to a couple questions that have come in. Would love more. So if you are listening live, 877-927-6648 or steve at tfnn.com. The first request uh, coming in is about XPEV out there. XPEV is a Chinese uh, something or other out there. I believe it's an ETF. And what we've got here, it is in wave number seven to the bottom on the uh, daily time frame. That needs a higher low to confirm that bottom pattern. It's got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. That needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom and there's an A to B equal C to the downside that suggests maybe the bottom isn't in just yet on a weekly time frame this week will become a TD9 count bottom so the cool thing uh, for you the individual that uh, continues to look for XPEV I'd watch this week's low because whatever this week's low is if price closes below that next week that tells you about that this thing's going to continue to move lower out there on a monthly time frame chart price right now is testing it's trading just below profile support out there so on a daily time frame you can watch for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom that will go along with the weekly time frame that's got that nice td9 count uh, bottom again this week completes that pattern so pay attention to the low of this week out there because if price closes below that that says get out of dodge which is x p e b the next request coming in from uh, john inside the tiger's den was to take a look at apple so let's pull up the charts for apple on a daily time frame right now, price is pulling back, trading down by a buck forty-five at one ninety ninety-seven. It is trading just below its green oscillator and change line. A close below that today, John, would tell us that Apple's lost its momentum to the upside. That level being one ninety-one twenty-eight, and that would then suggest a move back 
to further support. And that's at 187.42. If price were to close below 187.42, 181.62 would be up next out there. If, on the other hand, at day's end, John, price is able to hold that green oscillator and change line out there that says be careful because it could be setting up the C point of an A to B equal CD to the upside. I say could because finding the C point is very hard to do. It really, the easiest way is to go down to intraday charts as price on a daily time frame is testing a potential supporter. Again, 191.27. So let's do that, steve -O. So if we take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here, do we have any kind of a bottom inside of Apple? The answer is, depends on the close of this candle here in the next nine minutes out there. Why? Because this could be a bullish engulfing candle. And if so, that would confirm a buy the D point pattern. In the case of Apple, John, that would suggest to move up to 191.87-ish. And if price were able to get above that, you'd be looking at 192.50 or 192.96 out there. So that's what I see on a 30-minute time frame when it comes to Apple. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for your request. Let's go to our first caller. It is John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Steve, I'm doing very well. Hope you're doing the same. I am. I am. Uh, and, did you enjoy uh, the foot? And since and since we've got a uh, rematch of what four years ago and two Sundays uh, time, we're uh, we're counting on you giving us a rundown the day after. Okay, that sounds great. Sounds great. Uh, good football, certainly over the weekend. Good tennis. A uh, couple of blown leads out there, don't you think? Detroit blew their lead. Uh, Medvedev blew his two-set lead. Second time he's done that in the finals at the Australian Open. Nelly Korda, she blew a four-stroke lead out there, ended up coming through and winning out there. But it seemed like a lot of leads were blown over the weekend out there. How about for yourself? Uh, did you play any golf or do any uh, – no, you can't play golf up there this time of year. Maybe go skiing? <laughs> yeah, it's but you know what? We try. You do, yeah. That's true. Uh, I wanted to ask you about VIX, uh, yes. V I X. Yes. Uh, specifically, Steve, uh, of course, the VIX bottomed back in uh, mid to late December and is now just fluctuating around at a low level as uh, options volatility, implied volatility is uh, going nowhere as people are not uh, eager to buy puts or calls. Uh, with reckless abandon yet, but you and I uh, have discussed, and you you described to your audience how the VIX and its 50-day exponential moving average, and when VIX uh, closes above or below that moving average, can be the early signs of a change of intermediate term trend. Uh, so my question is, could you please pull up the daily VIX chart and with the 50-day exponential moving average, comment upon that and uh, describe for us uh, what your view is of this particular indicator and whether or not it is or just about to signal a change in intermediate term trends. So uh, so that's okay. the question. Perfect. And, and Steve, if, if you don't mind, I'd take it off air. No problem. No problem at all. Thanks so much for the request out there. Much appreciated. And so let's take a So we've got that chart that John was referring to up on our screen right now. And so at the very bottom panel is the actual spot volatility index. There is a red line on that. That red line represents the 50-day exponential moving average. So each of you should be on your charting applications. Each of you should be able to uh, put that on your screen out there. So the tool that I'm sharing with you, each of you should be able to monitor this as well. And this is over the long term. Uh, really, I'm showing a chart here that goes back to right now 2022, I think. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, 2022. And we can go back further, but we really don't need to. There's a plenty of data. So what John was referring to is when the spot volatilics is trading below, closing below the 50-day exponential moving average, that is a uh, gives the buyers an edge out there. And that is represented here. The, if we just start over on the left, you'll see a green square rectangle uh, shape out there. And that shows the time period of when the spot volatilics was below its 50-day exponential moving average. So the way I like to say it is when the spot volatilics is below the 50-day exponential moving average, the S&P 500 is likely to move sideways to higher. 
Of course, the the only uh, caveat to that is when you've got an actual top that is formed inside the S&P 500. So this pop volatilics is not necessarily going to be that pattern that identifies the actual top or bottom. But John was asking about really a change in trend type signal out there. And so we want to, what I'm going to do is I'll focus next minute and a half or so. And then when we come back from the break, I'll spend perhaps a little bit more time trying to pull that together for us. But the red rectangles or squares that you see out here are periods where that spot politics is above the 50 day. Sometimes we get just a quick move below or above that. I typically don't, you know, looking for the larger trend out there. And that's what these rectangular uh, shapes are showing us out here. So at this stage, uh, the red areas show when the spot volatility is above the 50 day and what price action is. Again, here, typically the SP 500 moves sideways to lower out there. Um, and so right now we're in a time period. So John's asking the question, well, where are we now? If we take a look at this chart right here, and I just simply expand this out, this might be a little bit easier for you to take a look at. And that is now on this chart here, I also have a Bollinger Band. And those are the red lines out there. And that setting is 50 to 1. That's not the normal 20 to 2 um, a setting that is a typical default. But what we can see is that blue line, that's at 1361. That's the 50-day exponential moving average. So when I woke up this morning, or maybe after my workout, um, you know, I came back and you had the S&P 5 where the ES Mini was trading higher and the spot politics was above the 50. And, of course, I was saying, what's up with that? So I don't know what's up with that. But John's asking, what's the first signal uh, that you could be seeing a change in trend? And the answer to that would be a close today above 1361 especially because we are also in the time period where we've been seeing a rising bottoms pattern inside the spot volatilics. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we come back from this, we gotta go take a look at the ES Mini just to put all this together for you. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs. Enjoy 
join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, John would appreciate this last night. It was my wife's uh, birthday yesterday, and uh, so I had to tape some of the football games because we already had uh, ticket concerts to go see Al Dimiola. Um, John's a real aficionado, especially guitarist. He's one of the greatest guitarists really out there. I mean, there's a, there's a whole group of them, but he's certainly right up there. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with him, I mean, at a young age, I think he was 18, 19 years old, uh, he, uh, Chick Corea, uh, heard a uh, heard one of his uh, tapes, one of his recordings, uh, somewhere, and uh, uh, called him up and invited him to join the band. Uh, he was 19 years old, and literally five days later, uh, he was playing in Carnegie Hall at 19 years old. I mean, he is he is that good. Now, last night was the end of their U.S. tour, and he was in an amazing mood. He brought out. Uh, that guitar, that he hasn't played that. He said he hadn't played that guitar for at least 30 years out there. So it was the original guitar that he brought out. I mean, they were really having a hoot, which was really cool to watch, uh, you know, and he's a great storyteller, which is also another great thing. Now, a lot of folks might not be able to necessarily handle his uh, music. Sometimes they get a little avant-garde, so it's not your typical type jazz. But if you just simply watch, and really the musicians that he uh, travels with, the piano player, French guys been with him for you know 20 30 years as well out there so uh unfortunately I know he I think he played through I think came through the uh, Clearwater area out there I know he's traveling so it was very cool to uh to to be on that last show normally like they're done and they just want to get the heck out of there but the sound in this uh, place and I've been to this theater a number of times the sound was just simply horrible it was disgusting the kind of sound that actually we left at uh, intermission <laughs> so let's go back and i want to and thankfully we did because others have been home so late i would never have seen the uh, football game so back to john's question about there with regard to the spot volatilics and maybe how each of us should go ahead and put this together at least consider doing this so i'm going to switch over to my uh set of charts out here for the es mini and we're going to take a look at the daily time frame i'd mentioned this earlier so the spot volatilics trade above its 50 day that would be one signal of a potential change in trend another signal or the additional signal that you'd like to see with that and it could be the s p it could be the spy it could be the es mini it could be all three together what you'd prefer to see some type of unanimous vote out there is some type of topic pattern well it turns out when we take a look at the es mini out here john there is a possibility so one of the things that i do with regard to my chapman wave counts is once i get to letter d that fourth wave out there i then immediately start another wave count and those are the letters here that are in the black digits and friday was a wave number seven count that was out there uh, if you go the more traditional route which would be you wait until you get to that seventh wave g and then restart that count out there it'd only be in that third wave but we do have a roads momentum indicator signal as well and if we could get or if we did get a bearish reversal candle or anything that confirmed that top out there and close below its green oscillator and change line which is currently printed at 49.13 i would say that that would be a sign of a uh, top out there uh peter i saw al dimiola uh, D i m e o l a, I think uh, is how you pronounce it. He, he is really just a, he is a superstar when it comes to watch his fingers move on those guitar strings. It's extraordinary. It, it really is an extraordinary thing to to. I just have an appreciate. You know what? Maybe most of us. Uh, I, I was speaking for myself. I really have an appreciation for those individuals can, that can absolutely do things that I could never even dream of. I could dream of wanting to do it, but uh, just no skill set at all 
uh, to uh, to uh, to do that. So uh, so on the ES Mini, uh, watch for a bearish reversal candle. Again, today's going to be day number seven. We're in window dressing. It would make sense that maybe we get that TD9 count top uh, towards the uh, middle of the week, maybe by Thursday out there. So that's what I would be looking for. That's the uh, daily time frame charts. Now, John, if we take a look at the intraday signals here, five hour, four hour, doesn't matter, two hour, uh, 60 minute, 30 minute, uh, 15 minute, Maybe not the 10 minutes so far. We've got tops on all of those intraday charts. So I know what the signal is that the ES Mini is uh, trying to send to us, but it still hasn't really broken, you know, hasn't broken any real key levels of support out there. So um, I would say just uh, just stay tuned. So I hope that answered your question. I know it was long-winded, but it really required that long-winded. Well, I didn't need the uh, Al Demiola story out there, but it did require that long-winded understanding. And again, the other issue, which we'd really like to see take place at that same time, is um, let's say we're just taking a look at the S&P or the e by the ES Mini. Any, you know, or we could take a look at the index uh, charts out there. But if I switch over here, and we had already take a look at this, but I want to do it again because what you really also need to see, John, is you need to see the ES Mini not making another new all-time high in other currencies out there, like the euro or the yen or the pound. So we can move lower in the dollar. We are trading slightly lower uh, in the dollar. We're certainly trading below uh, the Friday's all-time high. That's not the case in terms of euros, yens, and pounds out there. So we could see sellers in the U.S. But buyers overseas out there, and that would then say that whatever move we get to the downside would be relatively minimal, muted, so to speak. Of course, another area that John is watching, I'm sure, is he's paying attention to uh, Apogee, which came in about 314 uh, this morning. That Apogee pivot point at 4916.75 out there. And, you know, right now we've had price kind of going back and forth. So uh, Apogee pivot points not really giving us the clearest of signals uh, just yet out there. The NQ, that number's at 17552.75 uh, out there. So those are some uh, levels and areas to watch. So I do hope that helps you out. And as always, Thanks so much for the request out there. Uh, let's take a look at. Uh, oh, we've got a request out here. To take a look at K Web. So let me go switch over to those charts out there. K Web out here. Another uh, China. Uh, I believe this is the internet stock here inside of China. You know, it makes it difficult. I've shared this with everybody before. The, take a look at that daily time frame because you have currency uh, conversions out there between the yuan and the U.S. dollar. Um, it makes the daily chart really hard to rely upon its signals. Now, you can't rely upon the signals for where buyers and sellers are at with regard to those profiles. But what I would say uh, with regard to KWeb, very similar to XPEV, is that now in the case of XPEV, it's going to complete its weekly TD9 count bottom. Them on Friday. In the case of KWeb, it's going to confirm or should confirm a TD9 count bottom, but that pattern won't really complete until next week out there. So you could be seeing some type of bottom. I guess I'd pay more attention to the weekly chart than the daily chart out there. Um, so that's what I see when we take a look at KWeb. I do hope that that uh, helps you out. Now, I don't have any other requests that I see inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, let's see if anything is coming by email. And uh, I certainly I'm getting emails. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Nicholas writes in. Great. So Nicholas writes in. He would like to take a look at shop. So let's go ahead and put the. Oh, do I have something else? Hold on a second here. Uh, we do have we do have a caller. So Nicholas, I'll get back to your chart. But let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Hey Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing quite well, Steve, and yourself. Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. Uh, so your San Francisco 49ers came through. Another great game out there. It's been a little hard on the ticker watching those games, but hey, it's, it's worked out pretty good in the end. <laughs> That's great. Hey, Brent, I just realized we're about to go to breakout here. So hold your thoughts. When we come back, we're going to take a look at SQM. And uh, so folks, go ahead and fire up those charts and prepare for Brent's question. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. 
Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking your ticker symbol SQM with Brent in Martinez, California. We're going to, I won't pronounce this. Brent, are you able to pronounce the name of this company? I don't even attempt to. Perfect. Go okay. Symbol. All right, but, good. Uh, we're in the sa yeah, same my, camp. My main question for you, Steve, would just be to, I don't have a position. I've just, again, been watching like I often do with whatever stock it happens to be. But in this case, it seems like it's getting... Back to there's definitely a, a level on the yearly chart that it's really close to around 44 and change. And then on the three year chart, I saw there's something going back to May of uh, 2021, I believe it is. It's around 39. So I just, I didn't know if you had some levels in your charting that would make sense. That's what I'm trying to find, like where, where it's potentially a bottom in this thing. Yeah, so I, I would say that the, 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 the to answer that question, the first level to be watching is a swing point that is trading into on a daily basis from back on November the uh, 13th. And that swing point generated big volume. There were 6.8 million shares. Or for, this, for this instrument, that was big volume. Uh, today's trade, as an example, has done uh, 568,000 shares. Even if we multiply that times three, you know, we're only about, uh, you know, 1.7, 1.8 million, something like that, versus the 6.8 million that it's going into on uh, Friday, the volume to the downside. It did close below, and it's been below the bottom of its daily profile for a couple of sessions now, 912,000 shares. So prices point back in that swing point with lighter volume. Because we're trading inside there, that first test, uh, it would be at the 4486 level. And now I don't have any kind of bottom signal or anything else on the daily time frame. So that would just be your typical test and rejection of a swing point 
And I know that oftentimes or sometimes you trade that pattern, uh, Brent. If you do trade that pattern, do you wait for a sign of strength or do you just wait for the test rejection or is there some, some other elements that you consider? Yeah, I would say more the test and rejection is what I normally do. Okay. And it's actually worked pretty well for the most part. Not always, but. Sure. Um, and then you, w you want to see a continuation of that. You can't, I don't want just a one day deal. Yes. You want to see that kind of continue on. And then maybe even a, it might pull back on lighter volume and have another sign of strength. And then, yeah, just, you know, the yes, yes. general routine. Yes. So uh, in the daily time frame, which is what we're looking at, folks, to help us try to identify a potential bottom out there, you'll see prices also below profile supports. We don't have any support other than that swing point to the downside. Um, you're below red oscillator and change line. That's a bearish signal out here. But yet I'd still be paying attention to 4486. And that would be your first area to look at on a weekly chart out here. Prices also trade into that same basic swing point time period for the weekly time frame, which is the swing point that ended the week of uh, November the 17th. And that had uh, 15 million shares. As an example, last week, the uh, pullback was with 6.5 million shares. So uh, now there's also a roads momentum indicator signal that just triggered this morning for the weekly time frame. So to put that together, if that were to generate a bullish reversal candle, that would give you the confirming bottom pattern for the weekly time frame chart. The monthly already has a TD9 count bottom, and that price is trading into it. Now, the swing point that is trading into is from November, also of 2023, 39 million shares on the uh, monthly time frame. Again, for then, uh, right now we're at 28 million shares. So we're pulling into that swing point with light volume as well out there. Um, but if price closes below that low, and that low is the low we're looking at at that swing point test at 44.86. That's going to suggest that we could see lower price out there. But you'd still go back to, you'd still default back to the weekly and daily time frame looking for some type of bottom signal. Now, what, how did I confuse you? Oh, no, not at all. See, that was very okay. helpful as always. And just, yeah, I think that's the level to be watching if that's, you know, breached and it, you know, does that for more than a day or two. And then, I would just allow it to go lower, and if it has some kind of reversal there, then yeah, maybe that's it. And I did notice, like you mentioned, that there was good volume that day but at that swing point. So yes, that's an area yeah. I'll definitely be watching. I appreciate that. I, I like that you included the weekly and the monthly as well. So thank you good. so much for that, Steve. I hope you have a, a great day and a, and a great week. I will. Thanks so much. Always. I have a. I, have, I already have a great day. You called. I doesn't get better. I got a call from got a call from you and a call from Z on the same day. It does not get better than that here at TFNN. Although another call from somebody else, uh, maybe Garo, that would certainly add to it. That would be there that would be the your triple the, the that would, that, they, Exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> hey, Brent, thanks for the call. I look forward to speaking to you again. All right, take care, uh, Steve. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Now, Nicholas had written in, and he wanted to take a look at uh, Shopify. S-H-O-P is the uh, ticker symbol uh, there. So if we take a look at, I, I was showing charts. Or I th oh, wow, wow, wow. wow. Uh, steve -o. steve -o, steve -o, steve -o. Hey, uh, let me pull those charts up here since I wasn't showing them, obviously. Um you know, let me. So here's here's that daily time frame. Thanks, Mr. Bill, for make me aware. Uh, we were taking a look at the chart that showed that swing point. But here on the weekly and on the monthly time frame, you can see that TD nine count bottom, and you can see that road's momentum indicator signal that wave C back in November out there. So sorry for not actually showing that chart there right away, but uh, now we're back to square. And let's go take a look at the shop for a Nicholas out there. S H O P. And his question is: Hold or sell? So when we take a look at Shopify, if we open up the daily time frame chart, what we see out here is what? Let me pull this back, clean it up just a tad. So you had a Roachment Dominicator top that formed on January the 12th. And what that has led to is a consolidation with inside its profile. So in that instance there, that would tell you that this is really on a hold signal out there or a neutral signal. Now, there's a new profile that price is trading within. Uh, that's got support at 78.43 and resistance is up at where it's trading right now at the 81.95 level. So there's even with the new profile. Uh, you'd have to close below 78.43 to give you a profile change in trend signal, you know, two consecutive close below that level. If you get two consecutive closes above this uh, 81.90 ish area where we're trading, the exact profile level again for Shopify, 81.95, you close above that, you actually get a daily change in trend bullish signal to the upside out there. So right now, the daily chart says hold. 
the weekly chart says buy, uh, uh, hold as well. You were asking hold or sell. Those are my only two options. Why? Its TD9 count pattern was negated a couple of weeks ago. We're trading above profile. We're trading above the green house and change line. Those are bullish conditions. So the weekly chart says hold on to that trade. The monthly chart says hold on as well. We're trading above last month's high. We never got down to last month's low. Um, so this suggests that it wants higher price. So, Nicholas, that was a pretty easy one to uh, uh, to answer for you because the daily says you're in a consolidation with the top. So you're basically neutral out here and the weekly and the monthly say they want higher price out there. So my answer to that question is definitely hold. I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for writing in. We'll check real quickly here, see if there's any other requests that have come in. I don't see anything. Is there anything inside the tiger's den give me a second here see if somebody get over to that page oil john wants to take a look at oil so we can do that right here let's take cl we are in the march contract uh, so let's put the uh, March contract up on our screen right now. And so what you've got out here, John, is a TD9 count top that completed uh, last Friday. And as long as a uh, price remains below, closes below the high of last Friday, the high of last Friday was 78.26. Uh, as long as price remains below that, that pattern is in place out there. And that suggests a further pullback because right now we're trading below the top of that daily profile, 77.52. So John C., the target to the downside, the next target to the downside, inside of Light Street Crude, we'd have to say it would be 75.48. That's the center of that bearish structure daily profile. I'll see if there's anything else during the break. Otherwise, we'll uh, go ahead and take a look at uh, something else we get back here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com.
Welcome back, folks. Just imagine, you're 19 years old, you're just starting, you know, your your music uh, uh, career out there, and uh, you get a call from Chick Corea. Can you join the band? He didn't even go for a uh, an audition. Can you? Can you? Uh, we want you to join the band. And oh, by the way, uh, you're playing at Carnegie Hall in uh, four days. So brush up on your uh, brush up on our songs. Uh, so what I was able to find out here, John C, is if we take a look at a 60 minute time frame chart for Lightspeed Crude. Again, we're looking at the uh, March contract. It did complete a uh, TD9 count bottom at 11 a.m. out there. So watch that low. We're suggesting the daily time frame charts are suggesting that we head lower. If that's the case, what I'd say is you'd see the, the confirmation of that, even if it uh, closes below the TD9 count bottom, that amber candle out there, that low, which is a 76.54. I'd say the real proof from the pudding would be a close below 75.95. That's a TD9 count breakout level on a 60-minute time frame with a 76.06, 75.95 level out there. If price closes below that, that adds the idea on the daily time frame chart that we had down to the, at least the 75.48 level out there. So I hope that helps you out. There was some conversation earlier about Bitcoin. We don't really usually take a look at Bitcoin, not for any reason specific, but let's actually go ahead and do that to close out the show with this next minute out here. So I've got those charts, fi charts fired up out there. And uh, this is Bitcoin. I believe we're trading the February contract out here. So if we take a look at the daily time frame, we don't have any kind of bottom pattern. That doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. What we do have is we've got a change in trend signal out there, a profile change in trend signal, and that came across last Friday when price closed above uh, the re, uh, the profile level. Now price is traded above its green oscillator and change line. If you get a close today above 43.111, odds favor Bitcoin's going to make a move to 46.850. No topping signal on a 30-minute chart, nor on a 60-minute chart, nor on a 120-minute. You're negating a TD9 count top on the 240. So I would have to say Bitcoin is headed higher with that price objective at least at 46850 out there. So hopefully that helps anybody or confirms whatever you might have been looking at out there. So folks, uh, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you at about 315 with Tom. Have a marvelous Monday. And if I don't uh, uh, see you or, you know, you don't hear from me this afternoon, we'll see you tomorrow bright and early, 11 a.m. Take care. Have a magnificent Monday. Be safe out there, folks.